A normal day before the show usually starts with me going to yoga. I usually warm up my voice a little bit in the shower. And then I walk through Union Square to go to the subway. Usually stop at the farmer's market, see what's happening there. I was nervous to do a Tennessee Williams play. I, I had never seen the play on stage. I'd read it a few times, but The Glass Menagerie, I didn't have any ideas of how it was supposed to be. When I auditioned, I remember asking John Tiffany, like, what should I do? <laughs> like, is there a concept or... And he so immediately alleviated any anxiety that I had and just said, you know, let's see what you do. I don't have any big ideas except to assemble great actors to tell this beautiful story. Laura is the daughter in the Wingfield family. She is someone who I think her interior life is pretty wild and complicated. She also grew up with a sort of physical disability, which I think stunted whatever emotional growth that maybe happened or could have happened earlier on. Every time I work on something, it's a sort of different process of how I prepare. And this one was surprisingly uh, physical. Stephen Hoggett, who did the movement, he said that these are characters who so much of what's happening inside of them goes unsaid. He wanted to find a physical vocabulary for how what's going on inside leaks out. Stephen Hoggett and John Tiffany came up with these exercises. Stephen signed someone in the play and he said, take the person to a spot in the house and mend them physically. Which is like, what does that even mean? But what comes out of something like that is so amazing and is so very present in what, our, what we made. I try to usually choose projects that are things that I would myself want to go to. And I, I think I had a, a weird chip on my shoulder about like the Glass Menagerie where I was like, I'm not sure that I would want to go see that. And obviously I was just ignorant. <laughs> But I think probably part of not wanting to work on a lot of the classics too has to do with the sort of intimidation part of it. That I think I feel like I was trained for something so specifically and that I don't have the chops. But I think, you know, what's great about a long life is that you can learn on the job. One of the great things about doing The Glass Menagerie is that it's so autobiographical for Tennessee Williams' life. I was very interested in merging Rose, who is his sister, with Laura. I just got a sense of this very, very strong sibling bond. Zach Quinto, who plays uh, Tom, he did a ton of research and was a really valuable resource for me. But then beyond that, I felt like maybe it's better to use my own imagination of, of who this version of, of Laura is. I try to check in with the other actors and Zach and I are sort of next door to each other and so we usually have a good long talk before the show. So you warm up your body or your voice? <laughs> There's something so hilarious about doing eight shows a week for a long time, and it's that you really get to know the ins and outs of the people that you're in the play with. You know their life so much because basically every day you're like, all right, what's going on? <laughs> and then I just fell asleep. <laughs> Mm. 
when you do musicals, your process needs to be very, very fast. The expression of singing is such a different thing than just talking. There's less room when something is metered and there are notes on the page. You can't take extra time or you can't use a different inflection. You sort of have to stick to what's been written. And when you're doing a play, you're able to really go at it differently every night. Also, I brought apple cider donuts from the farmer's market. Right behind me. A band <laughs> <laughs> Working on this, watching Cherry Jones work, I was like, there's a reason that she is as good as she is because the amount of detail that she's layering in to one moment, she has like eight things going on at once. Getting ready to play this role every night I, I requires a little different focus than I've had to have before because so little is said and it is easy for me on some nights because I'm so still and because I don't say very much that I can drift when you're just you know sitting on a couch for an entire scene. It's easy to be like, what's for dinner tonight? Or like, what happens this weekend? Um, and I've really, you know, inevitably that's gonna happen sometimes, but I, I have been trying to, to stay rigorous about um, being present in the scene. What I love so much about this production is how many young people are coming to see it. As somebody who in high school, I just didn't, I didn't have a poet soul, so I just didn't get it. And the idea that there are, is like a whole generation of young people that could actually care about this play and I think is so special. I guess I feel like this part, more than almost anything I've ever done, that all of, not just my life experiences, but my, my theater experiences and my acting experiences have sort of led me to have the tools to even know what to do in this role. I have like the voices of other directors in my head about when they just would say something in a rehearsal, you know, years ago of like what acting is or something ridiculous like that. But I think a lot of parts, I'm, I'm, I've like taken little pieces from a, a few characters that I've played and been able to try to synthesize it into something. And in that way, it's like the best part of getting older because I'm not sure that I would totally have understood what to do with this 10 years ago when I was the actual right age to play this part. Um, I think there was a point where I used being an actor as a vessel to put things out there that I wasn't necessarily dealing with in my own life or that it was like a little bit of therapy. And it's always, I mean, it still is like that, which is part of the gift. But I also think to really dig deep, at least for me, being able to understand who I am and, um, and what's happening inside of me, that somehow helps me understand other people more deeply. And I think that's really what I'm in pursuit of, is, is understanding what makes people that are nothing like me tick. 
Sometimes you play roles that you sort of carry around with you. When the play ends, you sort of feel the emotional weight of the character. But as soon as the play's over, I remember when we were rehearsing, I was like, am I about to be depressed for like six months? Because she's got a lot going on. But I don't, I don't feel that way. I feel like once the play's over, she's sort of gone. And that's, that's a relief, actually.